Hi there, this is part two of my protection video. In part one, I looked at the action of the, where are we, the 8205A dual FET driver. This then allows the current to flow either into or out of the battery. Today I want to have a look at the intelligent chip, the DW01A. This is a six pin device then that actually looks at the voltages that are on the chip. If we come across here we can also use uh, protection devices that fit on the cell and then use a separate charge protector, a separate charger. Uh, this of course has no protection for undercharge on it, just for overcharge whereas these work for undercharge. Uh, if we look then at the actual circuit, where are we? Here we are, this is the circuit that we're looking at. What we've got is the DW up at the top here. Uh, this has got six pins on it, so it's got pin one, which is the over discharge. So when this is high, it switches this FET on. The overcharge, which when this is high, switches this FET on. We have a current measuring device here at the side. Uh, through this 1K resistor, pin 4 isn't actually connected. Pin 5 goes to battery positive, and pin 6 to battery no volts. So that then is basically, fundamentally, how this is wired up and how it works. Today what I want to do is to actually look at uh, the circuit itself so how have I wired it up well if I can get it to stay there maybe I can zoom in maybe I can't if I want to zoom in oopsie where did we go uh, try again no won't zoom in for me but what I've got then is the chips uh, on the wires on the chip so I've got a chip here uh, with the yellow wire that's coming across to uh, which pin is it again the overcharge pin I've got the blue wire coming off to the over discharge from the over discharge pin and the purple wire coming away from the current sense pin up at the top I've got the input and output goes to the battery and the output but down at the bottom I've got the battery note volt and a wire on the back then that is the input output wire don't know if we can see this or not let's have a look uh, there so that these are the two output pins but the positives are both the same so I've used the one up at the top so have I wired this in? Well, I've put it on a breadboard. Uh, hopefully we can see it down here. So there's the board wired in. So the wire from the over discharge pin comes to this voltmeter. The wire from the current sense pin to this voltmeter. And the over charge pin to this voltmeter here. I'm measuring the... Uh, voltage on the battery here or where I'm going to use our capacitors the current over here and I've put a second meter on here because essentially my meters are accurate uh, all I'm going to do is get an idea of what is going on since I don't think it's critical that it switches off a particular voltage so if I connect my uh, capacitors in if I can do it then I find that I've got a voltage here uh, on the capacitors it's about 0.700 difference between this one and this one so no my meters are accurate but they're sort of near enough now I've connected it in I've actually got a voltage on the overcharge uh, pin so that will switch on the overcharge FET and the over discharge pin it's got a voltage on it as well, but there's no voltage on the current sense pin. So what do I want to do, first of all? Well, first of all, I want to have a look at uh, being able to see what happens if I overcharge it. 
Now, if we look at the data sheet, we find we've got a number of graphs. Here, we've got four graphs. So up at the top here, we have the battery voltage. Here, we have the overcharge voltage. Here, we have the over discharge voltage. And down at the bottom here, the current voltage the current measuring voltage. Uh, we have yellow periods on here, which aren't really uh, of interest to us. They're just times when nothing's happening. So how does this work? Well, it starts off with the cell or whatever we're measuring at about 3.5 volts. We're then going to put on a charge, start the charge in here keep charging along here so we're keeping the charging on but what we find is as the battery voltage increases it eventually reaches this protect voltage uh, but we notice it doesn't actually switch off then it waits for a period of time of about 80 milliseconds after it's reached the switch off voltage before it actually switches off so there we can see it switching off uh, and it stays off for some indeterminate period of time whereupon after which we apply a load. If we apply a load then the cell voltage starts to decrease, comes down and as it starts to decrease, as soon as we apply the load then the charge reappears. So this is peculiar. I would have thought it would come down to the release voltage here, but it doesn't seem to. It seems to switch on straight away as soon as the load is applied. This then comes down to some for some time until we switch off the load and then some indeterminate time later we switch back on the charge. The charge is back on again, comes back up again, once again reaches the protect voltage and that then 80 milliseconds later switches off. So can we actually show this? What well, I've got these voltages at the side here, so the protect voltage I've got at 4.3 the release voltage at 4.1. For the others, uh, the discharge, I've got down at 3 volts and 3 volts 4. These figures then have come from the data sheet. So, can we see what happens? What we've got then is our system set up. We've got our capacitors connected to our voltmeter. We've got a three position switch at this side. So in its current position, uh, the battery isn't connected to charge or discharge. But if I connect it to the charge then, we'll see that the battery voltage, hopefully, uh, we've got a current flowing. No, we haven't because we have to switch our charging current on. So now I'll switch my charging current on. I can see that both my FETs should still both be on but my current sense is on zero. If I look at my current here, it shows negative because the current is going into the battery, not out of it. And here I can see the voltage going up. 3.4 volts we've got already. This is going up and keeps going up until it reaches the cutoff voltage when we're overcharge current here, voltage here, should go to zero and switch off the FET. So now we've got to about two point and we can see that we have a bit of a problem as it showed on the data sheet that this cycles very quickly between trying to charge and discharge. So my FET's going on and off quite quickly. So maybe this will eventually settle itself out, although I can't see why it should. So that seems to be what's happening on the data sheet. If I put a load on, I can try it again. So now I've got a load on. Uh, that should have brought this voltage down, which it has. And as it increases, once again, it'll get to, well, on my meters, about 4.2. One, two, and once again, 
then it is cycling as it gets above and below the voltage. Most peculiar that, but that is what's happened and so that is very interesting. Right, so I've put it on back on to no connection. What I want to do now is to look at the uh, the what? What am I looking at now? Over discharge. Let's look at over discharge. So now we're going to put a load onto our cell. Uh, once again, we're going to start at about 3.5 volts. If we're at 3.5 volts all the time, the overcharge will be always on. In the same way that when we were charging, the over discharge was permanently on. So now we've got the over discharge is on to start with and once it comes down below this protection voltage here some period of time 40 milliseconds in this case typical on the data sheet it will then switch off it switches off and here we find then that it stays off through some indiscriminate time and then we start charging it when we charge it then uh, what we find is it charges up until it reaches the recovery voltage and once it's re got the recovery voltage then the over discharge pin comes back up to high and this stays high and if we switch off the charge and then switch on a load we find that because this is high it will discharge once again until it gets below the protection voltage and it'll go for 40 milliseconds below the protection voltage when it will bounce back again. What we also notice, however, is that the current will go high again. Uh, this then, the overcurrent, goes high on that circuit. So let's try it. So what we need to do then is to put it on to discharge it is now discharging we can see that because it's discharging we've got a positive current on our battery uh, we've got our battery voltage coming down we've got both our over charge and over discharge voltages are high showing both fets should be on but our current sense is doing nothing so therefore this is gradually coming down coming down until it's going to reach some uh, voltage that's going to cut it off. We can see we're still getting 600, well, just dropped to 4.9, 580 milliamps. So we're discharging down. We've got 2.4, 2.8, 2.7 volts. Both these still on and this off. However, once we reach sort of some voltage here, about 2.6 on here we can see that our over discharge has gone off so therefore there is no current flowing but we find that our current sense has come on now i suspect this is because of the fact that the over discharge fet's gone off therefore it seems that a current is flowing into our device what happens then if I charge it back up again, if I try and discharge it, charge, discharge, if I try it, that's not connected. If I connect it, then it doesn't come back on because the voltage is below the release voltage. So I have to switch it on a little bit to try and get it above the release voltage and then it switches back on. But once again, on about 2.6 volts on here then it switched off again and this has come back on so therefore that's how it actually works it seems to work well don't seem to have any problems with it the one thing that I haven't really looked at is this protection voltage here this is the overcurrent so we find that the overcurrent actually comes on here, but I suspect that's just because the effect's gone off but here if I were to put a large load on it then we would expect the uh, discharge pin to switch off 
and stay it off until I remove the load. We could try it, see what happens. Uh, so what I'm going to do is to, well, I need to charge it a bit, I think, first. It needs to have quite a bit of charging for this. So I'll give it quite a bit of charge, get it up to a reasonable sort of voltage. And then, uh, so it's charging at almost an amp now. Then switch it on to discharge, disconnect my discharge and put it on to 1 ohm and as soon as I put it on to 1 ohm then I've got 3 volts on my current sense and that has actually switched off the discharge so yeah the overcharge, over discharge works and the overcurrent works so yeah quite chuffed with that I think that sort of covers everything that I want to do with this DW01A chip showing that it can work and does work the interesting thing of course is that it works for overcharge as well as over discharge so that means as far as I can see that boards like this are doubly protected. They're protected by this charging chip, the 4056, which if we can find its graph, which we can't, it should itself not go above, here's the graph for it, shouldn't go much above the 4.25 voltage, so that should cut off and shouldn't be a problem. But also the fact that the, D, uh, the DW01 only goes to 4.3 volts means that even if the charging chip's faulty then this chip should protect it so yeah an interesting t tour enjoyed going through that although it's very complicated and taken a long time but yes i think now i'm beginning to understand lithium cell protection circuits so it's bye now bye